Hello and welcome to episode 33 of the Low Back Pain Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Grant Elliott with Rehab Fix Online Low Back Program. And today's topic is, does weightlifting compress your discs? Squatting compress your discs, deadlifting compress your discs. So many people have heard that weightlifting and exercising oh, compresses your discs and it can speed up degeneration. A lot of people have been told this by doctors, very unfortunately. And it's not true. And this is what we're here to talk about. If you caught the last episode, episode 32, I discussed the worst stretches for your low back. Many people are concerned about not only doing the right things, but making sure they're not doing the wrong things. And if you are someone who's wanting to maintain low back health, who's wanting to figure out how to stop aggravating their low back and possibly find out if you are currently doing something that may be preventing you from recovering, then be sure to go listen to episode 32. But today, today I have two exciting articles to reference. These will be listed in the show notes if you want to read these yourself about weightlifting and the health of your discs. This is a hot topic. So, so, so many people are told to stop exercising when they have a disc herniation or, quote, degenerative disc disease or really any low back pain for that matter. Oh, you don't want to compress your spine. You don't want to make your discs worse. So don't squat, don't deadlift, don't do anything that's going to compress your spine. Avoid any load on your spine. Don't put the bar directly on your back. Maybe hold some light dumbbells. Avoid, 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 avoid. Well, I'm here to make your day and say that that is not true. Not true in a majority of circumstances. There is one circumstance where it can be true, and I'll tell you what that is. But we know that loading the discs does not damage your spine does not damage your discs. It can actually promote regenerative properties. And we're going to dive in and explain why. So let's get right to it. The first article I want to discuss, the first study I want to discuss from 2020. And what they did is they took two groups of individuals. Group number one does not lift any more than twice per week maximum of less than less than twice per week, okay? And this is considered the non-weightlifting group. They would be considered beginners, okay? You know, one day of weightlifting per week. The second group is the weightlifting group. They weightlift a minimum of four times per week. Both groups have to have sustained this amount of exercise for at least five years. So the non-weightlifting group only lifting one time per week, if that or zero for at least five years, the weightlifting group lifting at least four times per week or more for five years. Okay. Now what classifies as the weightlifting group in regards to exercise? What it consists of is a heavy workout of the entire body with a focus on exercises that strain the spine. This included three sets with eight to 12 repetitions, choosing a weight that led to complete fatigue after a maximum of 12 repetitions of the following exercises, squats, deadlifts, shoulder press, bench press, tricep rope pull downs, and sit-ups. So what they did here is for both groups of individuals, they would take an MRI of their entire spine in the morning upon waking around 7.30, in the evening around 4 p.m. Sometime between those two, the weightlifting event would occur. So for the weightlifting group, they had to work out or weightlift between those MRIs. And of course, for the non-weightlifting group, if it was the one day per week that they did, Workout, it had to be between those. And here's what they found. What most would expect is, oh, more weightlifting, more compression on the spine, more wear and tear, right? More wear and tear, more compression. They're doing squats and deadlifts, uh, shoulder presses, that compresses the spine. 
every week for at least four times a week for five years straight, yeah, they're probably going to be wearing out their spine, right? Guess what they found? They found that the initial starting point of the disc height between the individuals that had only been trading one time, maximum of one time per week versus minimum of four times per week over the last five years, that their starting point in the morning for their disc heights were comparable. They were comparable. They also found that throughout the day, you would think, okay, if you go work out, if you go do some heavy squats, heavy deaths, that's going to compress your spine, right? That second MRI you take at the end of the day, man, that's probably going to be, you know, evidence of that compression. It's probably going to show that compression. No, it did not. They found that the starting point for both groups were similar in regards to their disc height. So they had similar disc health. Disc health is categorized by essentially the amount of water in the disc and the proteoglycan content of the disc, the rate of gene expression, and cell apoptosis. Those are the main things that they use to look at uh, disc health. But in this particular scenario, it was mainly the height, but all of those things essentially affect the height of the disc. So they found that the starting point of both groups, one who hardly trains, one who trains a pretty decent amount, starting point, similar. At the end of the day, after exercising versus not exercising, still similar, still comparable. Now, generally speaking, both groups lost disc height throughout the day. That's normal. Everybody knows this. Your, uh, your discs will absorb water throughout the night called imbibition. As you stand and gravity is loading you throughout the day, that fluid, that water slowly, slowly squeezes out. And then you, when you lay back down at night, it reabsorbs it and it does that every single day. Okay, so in both groups, their discs got smaller throughout the day, which is normal, that happens to everybody. But the extent at which they got smaller, the ratio, so to speak, the ratio of the starting size versus the ending size, was comparable from the weightlifting group to the non-weightlifting group. So what does this tell us? Heavy weightlifting does not compress your spine. It does not compress your discs. For over five years, they were doing this and they had similar starting points, similar ratios, similar amount of disc height lost while one group is training hard and the other one is not. So let me ask you this. If the effect on your discs are the exact same, whether you're training basically not at all one time a week or at least four times a week, if the result is the same, if your disc health is the same, which one would you choose? The one that's going to make you healthier and stronger, duh, <laughs> right? If you, have the, if you have the option to not be fit, not be active, not be as healthy and have the same you know, uh, amount of uh, healthy spine, the disc specifically, the rest of your body would not be as healthy, obviously, because you're not using your joints, but specifically disc height here. Not be fit, not be healthy, not be active, and your disc height will be one size. Or work out frequently, move frequently, exercise frequently, be fit, be active, be healthy, and have that same disc height. Obviously, you want to do the one that is benefiting you in multiple ways and still resulting in the same amount of disc height, right? So you don't have to worry about the amount of times you're exercising or, or, or the extent at which you are. Except for one slight caveat, which I will discuss here in a moment, you can be confident that more weightlifting does not mean more wear and tear. It does not mean more compression. It does not compound and build and build and build, quote, over the years. I've been squatting so much over the years. My, my, there's nothing left in my spine. That's not what happens. Your spine can adapt. Your discs can adapt. Article number two. In 2015, they did a literature review on the effects of loading the discs and any sort of degenerative or regenerative effect. I will summarize this very quickly. Essentially what they found is that with animal model studies looking at a dose response relationship between loading the discs and regenerative properties, they found that by putting a high load on the disc, but a low volume and low frequency induces potentially regenerative mechanisms. 
linking back to what I suggested before, including improvements in disc proteoglycan content, that's essentially the nutrient profile of the disc, the matrix gene expression, rate of cell apoptosis, apoptosis is cell death, so the rate of cell death, and improved fluid flow and solute transport. These things were improved with loading the disc with high load, but low frequency, low volume. So here's where the caveat comes into play. They did find some degenerative effects, potentially degenerative effects, from instead of doing high load, but low volume, low frequency, if it was high load, high volume, high frequency, they did start to see some potentially degenerative effects. So essentially, what does this mean? Essentially, what this is saying is don't max out every week. Don't max out every week, multiple times a week. You don't want high load, high volume, high frequency. Essentially, what that's saying is you're not giving your body a break. Okay, so just mod modify the loads or modify the frequency, modify the volume, I should say. Maybe one week you've a really, really, really high volume week. And remember, we're probably talking about very high loads. The body's extremely good at adapting. And this also depends on your quality of sleep, the quality of your nutrition, all these things. There's multiple things that affect this, okay? So we're, we're not talking like, oh my gosh, I had three hard workouts this week. I gotta take it easy or I'm gonna hurt my spine. That's not what we're talking about. We're probably talking about training really hard, really heavy, really frequently, probably like six or seven times per week. It's probably what we're training. Well, that's, that's probably what we're discussing. Over a lot of time can start to see some degenerative effects on the spine. But the point of this article is that the high load, high load, which people are afraid of, weight, weight. People are afraid of putting a lot of weight on their back. That actually induces regenerative mechanisms within the disc. It's going to improve your disc. It's going to make your discs healthier. Maybe don't squat seven days a week as heavy as you can. Maybe don't deadlift seven days a week as heavy as you can. Okay, modify the rep ranges. <laughs> All right. But simply heavy load does not negatively impact your discs. It actually improves your discs. It improves the regenerative mechanisms. And regardless of, of if it maybe doesn't improve regenerative mechanisms, at least based on our other study, we know it makes it no worse than someone who is not weightlifting at all. And it's better to move, be strong, and be healthy than to not if the outcome of your disc is the same, right? So what do you have to lose? Be confident in yourself. Be confident in your spine. Be confident in your low back. Be confident in your discs. Because if you're a healthy individual and you're just training good, you're training hard, there's nothing to be afraid of. If you're struggling with a low back issue and you're having a hard time getting back to squats and deadlifts and other exercises because of your low back pain, disc herniation, or sciatica, then of course you need to address that first. I'm not just saying, oh, go squat really heavy. It's good for your back, okay? Maybe after you and I are done working together, you're gonna be squatting heavy again, <laughs> no doubt, right? But you know, go through the right rehab, learn the right habits, learn the right education, learn the tools to keep your low back healthy and mobile and all these things, and then keep squatting, keep deadlifting, Keep training hard. Sustain those changes. Be strong. You can't go wrong being strong. Okay? Work. Don't be afraid of work. You can push your low back. It can take it. It's not fragile. I hope that this sheds some light on some of these topics, these controversial topics about weightlifting and, and disc pain and disc herniations and disc health and all these things because unfortunately it's something that's continue uh, to be misunderstood. A lot of people don't understand this. A lot of doctors are still saying, stop deadlifting, stop squatting. It's not good for your spine. It's not good for your disc. Oh, degenerative disc disease, disc herniation, all that crap. They're still saying to stop doing that stuff. And it's wrong. It's just simply wrong. It's, it's false. It's not correct based on the evidence. And I'm here to try to shed some light on the right tools, the, the, the appropriate information, the right evidence, and to empower you to pursue a solution and then to pursue the right information and to continue to lift healthy and be strong and, and lift heavy <laughs> too, right? So you can maintain these changes for life. So if you or anyone you know is struggling with lower back issues, disc herniation, sciatica, and you're struggling to get to that point of getting back under the bar, getting back to deadlifts and squats so you can keep your discs healthy, then let me know. Contact me, submit an application using the link in the show notes or on my website so that I can meet with you and we can go over your situation one-on-one -on -one and we can put the right plan together 
to get you back to squatting and deadlifting and exercising and doing everything else you want to do. And if you found this podcast helpful, please leave a five-star rating and review on Apple. It will help this podcast reach more people. And if you're watching on YouTube, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe to boost it in the algorithm and to expose it to me to more people so that people out there who are struggling to find the right advice, the right help, can have a chance of finding the right help and the right advice because this podcast may change someone's life. Continue to be a good person, spread goodness, find ways to make someone smile today, find ways to improve someone's day, and also remember to go move outside in nature and in the sun. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.